Monday, the 23rd of January. Welcome to today's Nairobi News Bulletin. My name is Modani Mushiri. Nairobi Senator Mike Sonko has denied media reports that claimed he agreed to become Peter Kenneth's running mate in the Nairobi gubernatorial race. Senator Sonko has said he is in the race to clinch Nairobi's Jubilee gubernatorial ticket, but said he will support whoever wins the party's nomination. Sonko also warned city politicians from invoking President Uhuru Kenyatta's name in brokering election partnerships. Mr. Kenneth had over the weekend refuted claims that he had offered to pay Senator Sonko to push him out of the governor's race. The scramble to control Nairobi within the Jubilee party has taken a new dimension with claims of a deal struck among the contestants. According to a source within the Jubilee party, there is a deal that puts Kenneth as the Jubilee flag bearer in Nairobi with talks ongoing to convince Nairobi Senator Mike Sonko to either deputize Kenneth or run for the Nairobi Senate seat for a second term. At the moment, there is Kenneth on one side and there is Team Nairobi that is led by Nairobi Senator Mike Sonko. Team Nairobi brings together Sonko, Dagueti South MP Dennis Waweru, nominated MP Johnson Sakaja, and former Stare MP Margaret Wanjiro. The deal claims Wanjiro is to benefit from a cabinet position if Jubilee wins the 2017 elections. Niko kwenye kinyanganyiro chakuwa governor wa county ya Nairobi. Sija mwachia mtu na sija chapa deal na mtu yoyote. Nimona kwa magazeti muna sema hivyo. I saw somebody saying that we should unite, we should consult. I want to ask you, my friend, don't waste your time. Join Team Nairobi and we can consult together and come up with a Nairobi lineup that is people driven. At the same time, Sakaja has denied claims that he will ditch Jubilee if he does not get the Nairobi ticket. He blames his political detractors for the claims, saying it was a ploy to drive a wedge between him and President Uhuru Kenyatta. I have put my energy, my time, my zeal, my intellect into use for Jubilee inside and outside parliament. And today, I would like to say that I am even more convinced than I was before that Uhuru Kenyatta is the man this country needs as president and Jubilee is the party that we must all get into and that my support for President Uhuru Kenyatta is stronger and deeper moving forward into the next election. A dusk to dawn curfew has been imposed in Mandera after suspected Al-Shabaab militants attacked and killed a Kenya police reservist early this morning. In the dawn attack, the militants allegedly hurled explosives at a nearby bank, destroying the walls and shattering windows of the building. Mandera County Commissioner Frederick Shisia said the police reservist was killed in another attack in the, early in the eatery in the deputy governor's house just within the town. It has not yet been established why the terrorists carried out the attack, but it is alleged that they were targeting non-locals at a nearby guest house. Police and the Kenya Defense Force soldiers have secured the Equity Bank branch, and soldiers have sealed off a bank, a restaurant, and a food kiosk located opposite the Mandera Deputy Governor's house to check whether there were other explosives. A police officer was on Sunday shot in the head in Kayole, Nairobi, at an event organized by the local member of parliament, John Dirangu. The police officer was shot while attempting to arrest a suspect who was in the crowd that attended the event. The wounded officer is said to be in stable condition after he was rushed to a nearby hospital by his colleague. One suspect has been arrested, but police are yet to arrest the person who shot the officer. And Kenya will be hoping to score big at this month's Africa Head of State Summit in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, with Foreign Affairs Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Amina Mohamed campaigning to be the next AU Commission Chair. Dr. Fred Matiangi, who is chair of the cabinet committee on her candidature, said Kenya has received positive responses from the 51 out of the 53 countries and will be reaching out to Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde before election day on the 30th of this month. Matiangi also defended what he said was an extremely low budget campaign and says that if successful, it would put Kenya on the international map. I can assure you we have run a very low um, uh, uh, budget campaign. We have been very frugal and highly disciplined, especially because we know uh, we are doing this at a time when we have a lot of competing priorities, even as government, uh, uh, as it were. So it's been an extremely low budget campaign. Uh, we've worked very strongly with colleague countries across uh, the continent. Uh, our president and deputy president have been reaching personally to their counterparts and colleagues across the continent. So there has been a collective effort, starting first of all with the East African community, 
and more than $11 million is allegedly missing from the Gambia state coffers following the departure of longtime leader Yaha Jameh. An advisor to President Adama Baromai Ahmad Fati said that the financial experts were trying to evaluate the exact loss, adding that luxury cars and other items were being seen being loaded to a Chadian cargo plane on the night. Millions of dollars are missing from Gambia's state coffers. This, according to President Adam Barrow's special advisor, Mai Hamad Fati. The monies have been reported missing soon after the longtime leader Yaya Jame left the country. Within the period of two weeks alone, nearly $500 million were withdrawn by the, by the former president, the government of the former president. Within two weeks, nearly $500 million. That's a lot of money, considering that we spend about $200 million on recurrent expenditure relating to payment of civil service and so forth. Jame, who lost December elections to Adam Barrow but refused to hand over power, finally flew out of Banzul late on Saturday as a regional military force was forced to move him. Barrow, who was sworn in as president in the Gambian embassy in Senegalese capital, Dakar, sent troops to Gambia to ensure security before his return to take office. Constitutional, as well as conventional, that when a new president comes in, heads of security organizations would owe him loyalty and would declare their loyalty. Like I indicated, we are yet to see that. And finally, a lawyer who had sought court orders barring the burial of Kanu-era politician Mark Toe now wants the body exhumed and specimens extracted for forensic examination to establish the cause of his death. Mark Toe, a former politician in the Moy regime, died suddenly and was buried almost a fortnight ago. Leland had sought court orders bearing his burial, but soon after went into hiding and resurfaced over the weekend. Leland says he was obtaining orders as a friend and legal advisor to the deceased and that he had no malice in the exhumation suit. The, le the late veteran politician's two wives, Mary and Sophie, have sworn an affidavit expressing satisfaction with the cause of his death. The family doctors also asserted that the late former assistant minister in the office of the president died of cardiac arrest on the eve of the New Year's at St. Luke's Trauma Orthopedic Hospital in Eldoret. What was the hurry in burying Mokto? Why did they hurry to bury him? I did not want to stop the burial of Mokto. What I wanted was specimen, which they hurriedly sunk deep into the, the ground. But the war has not ended. And that's it for us for now. For these and more stories, log on to www.nairobinews.co.ke. I'm Mudoni Mushiri. Goodbye.